I think many people um, involved in Mountbatten today would say that we've been on a significant journey over the last three, three and a half years. Um, you know, there's been some significant developments and actually that's all been due to the incredible work of our staff and volunteers and the support of our local community. Um, we have such a, a great um, reputation across our island in terms of the care that we give and uh, of, of the challenges and the innovations we're, we're developing to, to meet those challenges. So everything feels really positive from that perspective. Um, our finances are in order. You know, we've, we've done quite a lot of work getting this organisation um, where it needs to be for the future, delivering really good services to our community when they need them. Our Care Quality Commission really was testament. Um, the, the result of that was testament to all of that hard work. I think alongside that, though, we must not forget to take into account that we're facing huge challenges. Um, the health and social care system around us is, is really in severe crisis and there isn't enough funding and there, there aren't enough people to provide care as we move into the future. So we're really desperate, um, really, and, and, and how we work together with others in order to make sure that this organisation sustains its reputation, its high quality care and everything that we do into the future as well as developing new services to meet the demand. It's interesting to note that actually we're looking after 50% more people than we were one year ago. We've managed to find some new funding for that through grants and trusts, and that's really been developing our new care coordination centre, where we're supporting people in the last years of life as opposed to the last days and weeks. Um, it's our new bereavement services, our domiciliary care services, where we're going into people's homes 24-7 to enable them to have the best possible physical hands-on care they need during the last years of their life. So there are huge challenges. The numbers are growing and the funding is decreasing and we need to think creatively around how we manage that. In terms of our success and our innovations, um, it's been very clear to us that we're getting noticed across the UK and the rest of the world in terms of some of the successes we're having. You know, the Isle of Wight, as we all know, is thought to be well ahead of the rest of the UK in terms of demographic, particularly with the older population. And the challenges we're facing here are probably happening slightly earlier than they are on the UK mainland. So people are watching us and watching what we do and what our successes are and the challenges we face. We've had a huge amount of... Um, sort of attention from other hospices in the UK who are wanting to know more about our care coordination plans around our services that we're developing because they're starting to see them as a potential sort of solution if you like to the challenges that they're going to be facing just as we are. Just because we are flattered and just because we're asked to do something doesn't mean we should do it so over the last 18 months we've been talking um, consistently and continuously with our board, with our staff, with other partners around what a potential partnership might look like with Southampton in terms of helping and supporting them. Because really the bottom line is we need to think around what is the benefit to Mountbatten and what is the benefit to the Isle of Wight. One of the major benefits to Mountbatten is they're prepared to pay us to help them support their, new, their hospice into the future. And that will be an extra income stream for us. Um, the other benefits are, we all know whether it's right or wrong, services, health services on the island, some of them are moving over to the mainland, particularly to Southampton, and we are finding more and more island people who are coming to the end of their life in the University Hospital Southampton. We work hard to get them back home, either to the hospice or into their own home, so that they can spend the last um, period of their life together in familiar surroundings. At the moment, we believe there are more people over there in Southampton that we're not reaching who are island people who we need to get back to the island. We believe having a foot over there and being able to see what's going on early will enable us to do that in a much more effective way. We also see the clinical commissioning groups, which are the part of the NHS that hold the money, working a lot more closely together across Hampshire. I would much rather keep in touch with anyone on the, on the mainland who's going to be making decisions around our hospice's future on the island. So I want to be sitting around the table with the right people, deciding how much money we get in the future and what services we're going to provide. So I do think there are huge benefits for the island and for Mountbatten. So the really key messages are this is a good story. We've been asked to do something because actually we're getting noticed and we have a good reputation. Our island community should feel incredibly proud that that's happening. The second thing is that this is not a merger or a takeover and it's not any big business kind of decision. 
This is around two organisations working together for the benefit of more people. Both hospices will remain separate from each other so that Mount Batten Isle of Wight will remain Batten Isle, uh, Mount Batten Isle of Wight and Countess Mount Batten will remain Countess Mount Batten Hospice Southampton. No funding will go between the two organisations that's raised locally, so your money and what you raise to keep Mount Batten Isle of Wight going into the future will absolutely stay here, and I can guarantee you that. It's really important that what we've developed here on the island doesn't actually falter. So keeping this organisation moving forward and keeping it steady into the future is absolutely our key concern. And for us, that's the main driver for entering into this partnership. We do believe that from a national, um, from a national perspective, um, people will be looking at us in terms of our new ideas and continue to do that. If we can actually develop new ideas over a larger geography, we believe there's more funding from national bodies that will support us to do that. So feel proud that we're being asked to do it. Feel absolutely assured that your support for this hospice will remain on this island and into the future because we need to make sure it's here for that future. And actually, we can really make a difference beyond this island and the Isle of Wight can be noticed for something that it does really well.